Howdy everyone! For today's Jolly Lark, we're painting up one of the new Stormcast Storm Drakes from Games Workshop. We're going to be using a blue undershading for this. Uh, so this is a layer of a kind of a light blue paint that goes on first before we start applying the colors that we really want. To try to go for a little bit more naturalistic uh, shading, a little more realistic lizardy skin tone than you might get otherwise by just putting on a layer of contrast paints. I'd rate this uh, maybe a three out of five on the difficulty scale. This is not that hard. Doesn't require a lot of technical skill, no airbrush needed. So let's jump in. What I'm doing here is I've grabbed a faded ultramarine from a pro Aquarel, but any sort of, you know, kind of not too dark, not too saturated blue will, will work. And then what you want to do is just kind of paint that all over the dragon's skin and then we'll show you what we're doing on the wings here. So with the wings, we're putting on you know, a big fat brush, putting on a nice generous layer of the contrast medium, and then painting in the faded ultramarine onto the wing spines. And then real quickly, just wiping our brush off with a little bit of water and kind of very roughly fading it out. So you can see how fast and easy that was to do. So you get some contrast medium, and make sure you get, and I'm using a generous amount of this here. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. You know, it's okay if you're tinting the wings, but the goal is to get the wings, get a fade on the wings um, that goes from a darker blue kind of in the cracks along the spines of the wings and that fades up to kind of the, the white undercoat. We're working with a uh, Wraithbone under, primer undercoat here from Citadel. Uh, I think it, it sticks reasonably well. Um, so again, contrast medium all over the wing, put some dark, the darker blue in the crack, with your same damp brush, just fade it out. And you can see, even though I splashed the paint on the wing there, it stays wet for long enough that it's pretty easy to wipe around. So the goal here is to create a rough sketch of where the shadows are gonna eventually land on the miniature. And as you saw in the first few seconds of the video, this dragon is gonna end up being kind of a realistic natural green. All that this blue layer is designed to do is to sit underneath the transparent contrast paints that we're gonna use later and darken those paints. You know, just like when you put sunglasses on, it makes the world around you darker. What this blue is gonna do is almost act like sunglasses for the contrast paints that we're gonna put on later. All the contrast paints are reasonably transparent. So when you put a transparent paint on top of another color, you can still see that color underneath. So by creating these white to blue gradients, we're gonna get a little more realistic shadowing and shading than you would get from using contrast paints alone. Something you see if you've ever taken photos, you know, in bright sun, shade, it's pretty blue. If you take a picture of a shady area with the daylight white balance turned on, your picture is gonna have a distinct bluish cast. So using this blue paint now is helping to capture some of that effect that our eyes will perceive as more realistic, natural shadows. So this only took a few minutes, and what you've got here is a dragon that's kind of blue all over, pretty light in the middle of the wings on the top of the dragon, and the underside of the dragon is all over blue. Now, to push the shadow effect even further, we've grabbed some of the Citadel Contrast Leviathan blue, if I watered it down a little bit with some contrast medium, it's a pretty dark, opaque contrast paint. So it's probably 50-50 contrast medium and Leviathan blue. And we're gonna take this and put it all over the underside of the wing. It's just, like, this is a big fat brush. I think this is a size eight brush. Um, so there's a big fat brush all over the underside. It doesn't matter that much at this stage how neat you're being. I mean, you don't wanna have paint, you know, dripping off the wings onto the floor, but you can put it on a little heavier, a little lighter. You can play around with the effect and see what you like. Um, but what we're trying to simulate here is sunlight coming down from above, hitting the dragon's skin and wings from above, while the underside of the dragon's wings are in the shade. So what we're doing right now is before we put on any of the colors that we ultimately want the dragon to be, we're painting on the shade. We're kind of pre-shading the dragon with blues before we then add the contrast paints later. And you'll remember from those first few seconds of the video, there's no blue on this dragon. When this dragon is done, 
There's zero blue at all in the dragon. So as you're putting on this darker blue, just keep in mind the same principle that you would always use when applying shades to a miniature, which is that the deeper the recesses, the darker the shadows. So you're getting some shadows on the legs, you're getting some shadows on the underside of the arms and the belly, underside of both wings, anywhere that if there was a light shining directly down from above, the light wouldn't be hitting. Like you can see on that back leg there, the underside of the leg is pretty dark while the upper part of the leg is a little lighter. Take a minute before you finish up to see if you've missed any spots. It is important at this stage to make sure you've got a little bit of dark blue in all of the, the cracks and crevices. But you can see here when viewed from above, the dragon looks pretty similar as it did after the first step because you're not seeing hardly any of that dark blue when viewed from above, right? That, that looks pretty similar to where we ended up with on the first step. But flip the dragon over, it's a lot darker. And that's what you're going for, because you're painting in the shadows. We're putting the shadows on first, and then we're going to add the actual color we want the dragon to be in the next step. Before that next step, make sure that your paint is thoroughly dry, because some of this went on pretty thick. Once your paint is thoroughly dry, uh, what we're going to do is start with a white dry brush of the sunlit, bright, raised area. We've got our uh, big fat dry brush, some Proacro Bold Titanium White, which is a white that covers really nicely, and using a pretty dry dry brush. So you're getting a little bit of paint on the brush and then wiping most of that paint off of your brush so that you're just depositing a little bit of paint on the raised areas of the miniature. We're gonna go in and dry brush all of the areas that didn't get any of the darker Leviathan Blue in the earlier step with this bright, bold titanium white. So you can see how I'm wiping off the paint my brush on that paper towel there. And we're gonna come in and just kind of lightly brush over and brighten up some of the areas that got the faded ultramarine earlier. This is gonna bring out the definition of the dragon scales, the texture of the wings. Hey, just as an aside, these uh, Storm Drake models have a great texture on the wings. The, the sculpting on these is really nice. With even just a little light dry brush, you can really see that kind of stretched, leathery texture come out on the wings. The sculptors did a, a really terrific job with this, and it doesn't take a lot of a lot of you know technique to really pull out the texture on those wings. Just a terrific sculpt on these. Now is and just put kind of a regular even coat of the Militarum green on the sh little test shield here. Doing little, little, little test pieces like this, you don't have to do a whole test model. I felt a lot more confident going in to paint the dragon, even just seeing how this one little wooden shield turned out. Wooden shields are great because they've got a lot of texture, they really show kind of the interactions of the paint well. And just put kind of a regular even coat of the Militarum green on the sh little test shield here. Doing little, little, little test pieces like this, you don't have to do a whole test model. I felt a lot more confident going in to paint the dragon, even just seeing how this one little wooden shield turned out. Wooden shields are great because they've got a lot of texture, they really show kind of the interactions of the paint well. About ready to actually start putting the color on that we want the dragon to be. For a uh, kind of natural, realistic, quote unquote, dragon color, we're going with the Citadel Contrast Militarum Green, diluted a bit with some contrast medium. Uh, the more medium we use, the lighter it's going to look when it goes on. The contrast medium is essentially just diluting the color. We're using a big, fat, wide brush. We're putting it on in a relatively even layer. And we're going to use more medium on the top of the dragon where we want it to be lighter. And then later on, we'll dial back how much contrast medium you're going to use to create a darker green effect on the underside of the dragon. So. Big, wide strokes like that will give you a nice even coat on the wings. And you can see already on those first two wing segments how the blue is showing through the green a bit. That's giving a little bit more of a shadow effect than you'd get by using the green contrast paint over a white primer alone. Because right now, working through the green contrast layer, we have both the blue shading and the white highlighting. 
you know, if you were painting an ice dragon, maybe you'd be done at the blue stage. But adding the green on top, um, you're kind of getting the benefit of all three of those colors that are showing through the green. So if you're curious, uh, you can stick around after I show off the final model and I'll show you the process I used to pick out what color green I was gonna use and the testing process that I used to pick out what color shadows I was gonna use. So as you're doing this, you can kind of season to taste a little bit. I knew I wanted the dragon's skin to be a little bit darker than the leathery stretched out skin of the wings. So when putting the Militarum green on the scaly skin portions versus the wing membranes, I'm using relatively less contrast medium and more contrast paint. These dragon models have a lot of small detail that really works well for the contrast paints. You know, the, these wings are filled with little cracks and um, areas where the skin is pulling little wrinkles. The skin, you know, the scaly skin has lots of bumps and surfaces for the contrast paint to grab onto. I tend to not reach for the contrast paint if I'm painting something really slick and smooth, like the side of a vehicle or something like that. But these are a perfect use for the contrast paints. But kind of like I uh, said earlier, if you're just using the contrast paint alone, I feel like sometimes you don't get quite the level of shading that, that I want, especially on a larger miniature. You know, for being a miniature, these dragons are you know, six, seven inches across. Um, and you really do want to work on creating a little bit more shading and highlighting volumes on them than you might get with just a contrast paint alone. Uh, not that uh, just a contrast paint alone wouldn't look great, uh, but you can really see as I come in and start doing some of the skin that also has some of the dark blue on it. Now, this is a this is an all over layer. We're putting the Militarum green all over and look at the different effect that it has there when put over the darker blue. You know, it, it's a totally different effect. So, you know, you're still getting that green tint. You're still going to get a little bit of that that natural green color, but putting it over the darker blue is just further darkening it into a green. So coming in on the bottom of the wings, that green that we're ending up with, because it's being layered over the blue, is a really different effect than the green we were getting on the top of the wings. This is a great example of a technique that doesn't take very long, you know, but I'd hesitate to call it speed painting. I'm you know, going relatively slowly, relatively carefully. Um, I want to make sure that the contrast paint isn't puddling up in any of the crevices. I want to get a nice even coat of the the green contrast paint all over the miniature. I'm using the Militarum green here. If you wanted to pick out a different color, I think that this same undershading technique works well with other colors. Um, you'll get a slightly different results uh, depending on what color you're putting on top of it. But if you're gonna pick any color to do this undershading techniques with, blue is a good starting point because like I said earlier, you know, shadows under a yellow sun and a blue sky are, have a very strong blue cast to them. The only colors that I hesitate to use blue undershadows on would be something in the orange and red family. Uh, particularly with oranges, you might end up with kind of a brownish shadows, which looks okay, you know, depending on what you're going for. But I might kind of go for more of a, a purpley or maroon shading if I was putting orange on top. All right, so we've coated the entire dragon in a thin layer of the Militarum green mixed with the contrast medium. You've uh, got what you see here. And as I often say in the videos, you could stop here, but we're gonna push it a little bit further with a, a few more relatively easy steps so we can really bring the contrast to a more dramatic point um, and have something that really looks great on the tabletop. So as a next step, I'm gonna take, again, the exact same Militarum green um, along with some contrast medium and darken up some of the dragon skin that is facing upwards, um, but isn't the focal point of the miniature. So that's the tops of the legs, the back of the tail, places like that, where you might just want to de-emphasize it, make it a little bit darker. It's, it didn't get hit with the dark blue, but it's either under something or behind something, or not, it's not quite as bright as the rest of it. When you're working with contrast paints, you can always add another layer of the same contrast paint to make it a little darker. So we're going to increase the contrast on the wing membranes using the same technique that we did with the light blue earlier, which is to paint the entire membrane with the contrast medium, put a little bit of the pure contrast paint in the edges, and then just feather it out with the same brush. Um, so coat the membrane in the contrast medium, put a little bit of paint in the corners, 
And then with a damp brush, you just kind of feather the two together. Um, I really think that these are a great spot to start practicing some of these wet blending techniques if you've never given that a go before. Um, they're big, they're wide, the texture of the wing membranes is pretty forgiving. And you can see how quick that is just to add a little bit more green in the cracks. Feather that out real quick, and you're getting that point where the, uh, by adding more shadows where the wing membranes curve down, you're getting that nice kind of dramatic fade that really makes those membranes look curved. By shading the, the downward part of the curve, it just makes them look more curved than they actually are in the miniature. It helps tell the story that this dragon is powerfully flapping its wings and flying over the battlefield. So we'll skip ahead after we're done with this wing, but wanted to show you each of these segments, especially as we get into the bigger segments. You know, this is a relatively quick and easy technique. If you haven't tried this before, I just want to encourage you to give it a go. I think sometimes when uh, painters, especially who are newer to the hobby here, you know, blending, it, it can be a little intimidating. But you know, there's blending techniques like this one that are relatively quick, relatively free form, you know, uh, with loose, big hand motions. Blending isn't only limited to painting, you know, super detailed, you know, competition miniatures. Uh, th there's lots of ways that you can incorporate some quick, easy blending techniques into your miniatures, especially larger miniatures like this. The, the smaller the area you're trying to blend, the more challenging it is. Uh, but on a big thing like this, you know, you dab on big old blobs of paint like this uh, and still get a, a great effect. You just then you put on paint relatively heavy, heavy, and then you're just spreading it out, you know, just like you're buttering a piece of toast, just kind of taking those blobs of paint and swiping along them with a big, thick, round brush. And you get that a uh, you know, look at that segment that I'm working on here compared to the one on the left. It just kind of has a little bit more life. The shadows are deeper, the folds are darker. Um, and so going through and doing that on all the wing segments, I think is a neat effect. So here again, painting the entire membrane segment with a thin layer of contrast medium to prepare it for putting some of the pure straight out of the pot contrast paint along the edges. Uh, and what you're gonna get is kind of some natural mixing because you're then painting that contrast paint on top of that layer of contrast medium that you already put down. So you're preparing the surface with the medium and then putting the paint on top of that. So the surface is already damp when you're putting the paint on. Quick, long swipes with your brush, feather it out, and you're good to go. With this shading strategy, it almost can sometimes feel like you're working on two different miniatures because the underside of the miniature is really taking a different tone than the upper side of the miniature. Um, because the wings are so flat, they really do have a top and a bottom, and you're gonna end up working on the top and the bottom almost kind of separately. They don't really connect to each other. So while we've got the uh, Militarum Green open on the desk here, we're just gonna grab our brush and with some pure undiluted green, darken up the underside of the wings and put some more green on some of the underside of the dragon. So look how dark that's getting there. We'll let that dry and we're ready for the next step, which is putting on a dry brush of the Pro Acryl Bright Ivory. Um, this is a little bit more yellow than the white we used before. Um, it's kind of a, a little bit more of a sunlit white color. Um, this is my Desert Island highlight color. And in many of my other videos, I've used this to, as a universal highlight which is a, a valuable technique for speed painting. Um, here, we're gonna use it as another highlight layer on the wings and the raised portions of the dragon. Alternating between layers of contrast paint and layers of dry brushing lets you find a balance between the highlights and the shadows that you're happy with. And you can keep going back and forth between these two until you are. So with this, we're gonna take a big fat dry brush and some of the, the bright ivory and just kind of, we're going really light here. Um, if you were dry brushing this way on your hands, you know, you'd barely feel the bristles going over your skin. This is, we're not pressing down hard at all. You're, you're gonna use a really, really, really light touch here. Just letting a little bit of the paint brush off onto the raised portions. And you can see what that's doing is it's catching those wrinkles, it's catching the tops of those folds 
but it's not getting into even the recesses of the wing membranes, which their depth is not that much lower. The raised portion of the wings are not much higher, but with a, a, a quick dry brush, you can really bring out all the raised details. Every time you add another dry brush layer to the miniature, you're making the raised details a little brighter. And every time you add a contrast coat of contrast paint to the miniature, you're making everything a little darker and especially making any cracks and crevices a little bit darker. So with this, we're focusing on just kind of the wing membranes, the center of the wing membranes, the, all the scales that are facing upward. Um, and slow and easy here, and we're just gonna go around over the whole dragon. This is really the step where the, the miniature really starts to shine. And this is kind of the, this is the sparkle step where all those details and all that shading that you've been working on really comes into play. You're gonna go over the top and the bottom with a lighter touch on the bottom. On the bottom of the miniature, just kind of get a little light, light, light touch of the bright ivory to pick up some of the details. When you're dry brushing, you're putting on such a thin layer of paint that it dries very quickly. So you're gonna flip the miniature over and then do a second dry brush coat to brighten up those highlights up on the top. And with that, it's really looking good. It's got that kind of dry, scaly lizard skin look where the raised portions of the scales are all light. The bottom has a, just enough highlighting to bring out some of the details. You could stop here and paint the rest of the miniature. We're gonna take the skin up a couple more steps further to add a little more color to the wings and increase the contrast just a little bit more. So for the next step, we're going to uh, grab a different color of contrast green. This is the Citadel Contrast Plague Bearer Flesh. And in our color tests, which we'll, we can show you after the video is over, um, I really liked how this looked, but it was a little too yellow green for me to want it to be on the whole dragon. I'm painting this dragon to look good alongside my Dawnbringers themed Cities of Sigmar army, which is a, has a red and yellow color scheme. So I didn't want the dragon to be an off color of yellow, uh, but I think the green will look good against it. But Plague Bearer Flesh is a very, very transparent contrast paint. It's one of the more transparent. Um, and it almost, yeah, as you see this going on, it's almost just tinting the wings a little bit yellow. This will give a little bit of contrast with the dragon while still staying in the same color family. It'll still, when it's all said and done, have the effect of being a, a green colored dragon, but breaking up the uh, monotone Militarum green just a little bit. You're continuing to benefit from the shading and highlighting that's been put on previously. Again, you know, we're tinting these membranes, this kind of yellowish green, but all the shading and highlighting that we put on in previous steps, it's such a thin coat of paint, you're still able to see it through there. So it's something to keep in mind with the contrast paints that they can be used as a glaze like this. They don't have to be used a one-step shade. We'll finish up the second wing here and then uh, flip the dragon over and we're gonna do the same thin coat of the Plague Bearer Flesh on the underside of the wings. This is pretty subtle, uh, but you just wanna keep it consistent so that uh, that little bit of yellow, and you want that on the top and the bottom of the wings. So for this next step, I grabbed my uh, color board that I did um, and just kinda of wanted to check in about what color I was gonna to use to increase the shading a little bit more. And like the look of the uh, Leviathan Blue again, um, so that's the same color we used to darken it earlier, um, but I wanted to see how it looked with the green. Uh, we used it to create the strong underside shadows on the initial undercoat, but also wanted to see how it looked in combination with the green. And it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna grab some of the Citadel Contrast Leviathan Blue, and I'm almost dry brushing it on here and using it just to create a little bit stronger shadows in the folds of the wing and just put kind of a regular even coat of the Militarum Green on the sh little test shield here. Do little, little test pieces like this. You don't have to do a whole test model. I felt a lot more confident going in to paint the dragon, even just seeing how this one little wooden shield turned out. Wooden shields are great because they've got a lot of texture. They really show kind of the interactions of the paint well, distinct outline on the edge of that area. So with the same big fat brush I've been using throughout here, I'm just gonna put in, brush on a little bit of that Leviathan blue into the folds and kind of wrinkles of the underside. And you can see that that's really bringing out that folded leathery texture of the wings. 
we can use the same technique to add some more dramatic shadows to the skin and muscles of the dragons. And, you know, if you're relatively new to this, it'll take a minute to just kind of find the right spots that look natural for shadows to fall. But a, a good trick can be to flip the model upside down and look at it from directly below. Uh, anything you can see when looking at the model from below should probably have a little bit of shadow on it. Um, with pretty minimal shadows being visible from the top. You know, from the top of the miniature, you might only see a little bit of shadow in some deep cracks and crevices, some deep folds in the muscle. Um, this isn't hard to do as far as, uh, you know, brushwork. You don't need lots and lots of practice with a brush to be able to do this. It might take a little bit of practice before you're happy with knowing where to place the shadows. Um, but if you follow the general rule that the underside of the model has a lot of shadows, the top of the model, not very much, that'll take you a fairly long way and uh, just add a little bit of shadow to the, you know, the deepest cracks and crevices of the top of the model. Start with that, work on it until you're happy with it. Um, you know, this is something that you can work at a little bit, turn it around, look at the model, see what stands out you know and, and when you're deciding what you want to stand out um, generally you want faces to stand out you want exciting parts of the model like weapons and claws to stand out and then what you can do is use these shadows that you're painting on to kind of de-emphasize the other portions of the model and by having the claws the face the head be the brightest most dramatic parts of the model uh, that's going to guide your Kind of eyes to those exciting parts of the miniature. Put some dark blue inside the mouth, that'll help with shading that later on. And just kind of going in and kind of do, do a couple layers here. This is going in, in thin coats, so you can do this, do it a little bit, come back once it's dry, do it a little bit more, and just keep going until you're happy with the look you've got on the model. One of the reasons I've gravitated towards this style over the past few years relative to the layering style that I grew up with in the you know old white dwarf days is that this just feels like a little more looser freeform way to paint. It's more fun with more room to fix mistakes when they happen. All right, we're back with our uh, good friend Pro Acryl's Bright Ivory, but we're swapping it out the big brush for a, a little detail brush and we're going to use this little brush to hand paint in some of the different textures that you might find on the dragon's body that aren't necessarily gonna be created by dry brushing. So note that these back scales on the dragon through the various dry brushing steps that we've done so far, uh, they're a little bland and flat. Uh, these are the one of the pieces on this miniature that doesn't have tons of surface texture. So the dry brushing steps that we've done previously haven't really done much for them. They haven't made them uh, that bright focal point that I think that they ought to be on the dragon. There's lots of these little scales, so I'm just gonna go in and, and really quickly put a few lines on each scale to create a little bit more texture than actually exists on the miniature. More important on the big scales, as you go into the little tiny scales that run down the ridge of the tail, at this point I'm really just dabbing the brush along the spine to create that effect and brighten up that ridge of larger scales that runs along the dragon's tail. So you can see it's really, really fast there. There's also some larger scales up in front of the saddle. Uh, again, kind of just doing some streaky lines with a small brush will give you a little bit of that kind of bony ridged pattern, but make those scales look like they're kind of bigger and stronger and thicker and just hit that. There's like half a dozen little larger scales on the top of the dragon's neck. Still haven't glued in that missing piece yet, but we'll do that in a little bit. Before I started painting this dragon, one of the things I did is look at some reference pictures of actual lizards. Um, there's you know, a lot of different color variations and you could paint a dragon in lots of different ways if you wanted to give it a little more natural look. But one of the things I noticed throughout all the pictures that the different lizards had in common is that not every scale is the same color generally. You know, there's, there's some natural variation in one scale to the next. So one of the things I want to do with this step, in addition to creating that texture on the back spine ridge, is just put a little dot of the bright ivory on some of the individual scales. Not so much that it looks polka dotted, not so much that it really even draws the eye to them, but just enough that there's creates a little bit of variation and not every single scale is the exact same color of green. 
Now, having lightened up some of the scales with the bright ivory, I'm also going to grab some of the same Militarum green that was used for the main color of the dragon. And with the same skinny brush, just go in and kind of dab a few of the individual scales with the Militarum green. Again, not polka dots, not checkerboards, just trying to grab a few random scales here and there, darkening up, you know, darkening them with another layer of Militarum green will give the impression of some of that natural variation that a reptile's scales might have. While you've got the little brush in hand, this is also a good time to just give a quick swipe with Militarum green down the spines of the wings membranes. Just darken those up just a little bit. Finally, to finish off the effect, I'm gonna grab some of the Citadel Agrax Earthshade, which is a very thin, very transparent brown paint, and do the same thing. Just coming in, little dot, 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 darken up just a few of the scales here and there, giving just, again, a little bit more realistic variety of colors. Yeah, out in the world, it's not all one color. All right, we're getting into the rhythm here. If you've been watching so far, you can probably guess what comes next. That is more Militarum Green. Now this time it's watered down a fair amount with a decent amount of contrast medium. You can see down there on the palette that this is going on pretty thin. So you know, the rhythm of this style is base coat, dry brush, contrast, dry brush, contrast, dry brush, and just keep going with that pattern until you're happy with the depth of color and effect that you've achieved. At this point, we are right about there. I think the skin's looking good, it's looking scaly, the wings have a nice texture, kind of leathery texture to them. I think all that's needed is one more last highlight step. With this, we're gonna grab the uh, bright ivory again, and this is the, the lightest of light touches. We're really, 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 just trying to put a little sparkle on the tips and edges of the details. And we're uh, flying past this at 10x speed because this is a process I, I kind of go slow and steady on. And you just stop when you're happy with how it looks. Even when you're trying to paint a miniature reasonably quickly, it's good to just stop, look around, make sure you're happy with what you've got, looking at where the miniature is right now. I think the highlights on the bottom are a little bit bright. So we're gonna go back in and put a little bit more green on the underside of the wings to make, the, make it so the highlights on the underside of the wings aren't quite as bright as the highlights on the top of the wings. Obviously, you can see that I have painted the rest of the miniature in between these two steps. I painted the knight and painted the armor, um, but that's not what this video is about. And so for a final step on the skin, what we're gonna do is grab some Pro Acryl Transparent Black. Now, on one hand, uh, you may already have a pot of transparent black paint in your painting station, uh, in your paint collection. Uh, Nuln Oil is a very popular uh, transparent black paint. Um, they do work a little bit differently, I feel like. Nuln Oil um, is straight out of the bottle, a little bit more transparent um, and quite a lot thinner. So when you put Nuln Oil on a miniature, it's generally going to flow into the cracks and recesses of the miniature. Whereas this transparent black here, it'll kind of stay where you put it. So you can actually paint with it without having it run all over the place. It behaves maybe a little bit more like contrast paint in that way. So you can do what I kind of think of as smudge shading, which is that you can put a little blob of the transparent black uh, into a crack or into you know, an armpit or a crease of a miniature. And then you can use your brush uh, to kind of feather out the paint, creating kind of a blended effect. So it's easier to see on the top of the wing here. I touch out of focus, but you can, you can see what's going on here. So I put a little bit of the transparent black into the tips. I put a little bit of contrast medium um, onto the miniature, similar to what we did to fade the wings. Just put a little, I'm going to put a little dot of the transparent black in each of the kind of edges here. And then I'll use my brush to feather it out onto the rest of the wing. So same here. We've got a line of pure transparent black, just wiping the brush off. Then we're using that damp brush just to kind of 
pull the transparent black out into the rest of the wing. So dots of pure transparent black, wipe your brush off, grab a little contrast medium or, or water, but contrast medium is less likely to leave the kind of water stain marks. And just kind of pull the transparent black out and just kind of keep pulling it out until you don't see it anymore, until it's fully diluted. So this transparent black, when it dries, it's a very deep, dark black. It, it works well for the most extreme shadows. Um, in some previous videos, if you've been watching the channel, I also used the Vallejo Black Glaze for this same technique. And that works well too. Um, I've actually switched over to using the, the Pro Acryl Transparent Black, I think. It's a little thinner straight out of the bottle. Um, so it doesn't stick quite as well where you put it as the Vallejo Black Glaze does. But I, I feel like it, shows the colors that are underneath a little bit better. It's a really a truly a transparent effect. So when what you're trying to do is shadow other colors, I think the Pro Acryl Transparent Black is a better choice. And I might leave the Vallejo Black Glaze that I had previously used for effects like uh, soot or smoke stains and things like that. And that's it. Get a little bit of that black into the deepest, darkest crevices, and it is done. With about four hours of active painting time, you can get a great looking model for your tabletop. Thanks for watching, hit that subscribe, hit the like, ask any questions below, and stay tuned for those bonus clips. All right, so first up, we've got what to do when you realize you forgot to put a piece on your miniature. So first, glue it on. I like super glue for this uh, because you're putting it on top of a layer of paint. Plastic glue is not a good choice. Uh, so let that glue dry, and then I grab some uh, brush-on primer. Um, Vallejo makes a good one. Badger makes a good one. I think there's other companies out there that do it too. So I'm, this is a step you want to be pretty careful, because at this point I'm priming this one little piece on top of the dragon's head, and the rest of the dragon is pretty well done. Um, so I'm going to just real carefully and slowly put on that layer of gray primer, on the missing piece. Once that primer is dried, essentially all you're doing is a scaled down version of the same process we did on the, the main body of the dragon. So put on a white highlight, followed, let that dry, follow it up with a coat of the Militarum green, let that dry, and then do another final white dry brush, being careful not to overbrush too much. Now, because this is a little piece on the top of the head, it's okay if it stays, you know, kind of bright. So I'm skipping, they're not doing any of the shadow layers. There's none of the blue layers on this. Um, there's none of the Leviathan blue, and I'm not putting any transparent black on it because this is on the top of the model. And there we go, fixed. All right, second bonus clip, how to test out colors before actually putting them on your model. Uh, a little bit of palette paper is great on this. I might do a quick video on palette paper later because it's handy stuff. So I, I put down all the colors that I thought I might use as my shadow colors to see how they might interact with a green on top. Let those dry and then put the two greens I was thinking about using on top of those in different concentrations. All right, so we've let all these paints dry for a little bit. We've got our full grid here. We started with six contrast paints. We've got on each of these patches, we've got the Militarum green on top and the uh, Plague Bear flesh on the bottom. And you can see, it, you know, this is a little messy, but you can kind of see what's happening here. And I think this is interesting. Um, the gray, I kind of knew the gray would work, but Silicalinum gray I've used to paint on shadows before. It's a super versatile color. It works, but it's not particularly interesting. And I tried to get you know, spill over some into the white to see the what the color was beforehand. The undiluted, le the Leviathan blue, this is too dark, it still looks too blue, it's overpowering the green. But I think this is interesting here. I think that is potentially an interesting shading to the green, to just give a little bit more contrast shading to the green. Ultramarine's blue might be among my least favorite contrast paints. It's just not, it's kind of chalky looking, it's kind of dull. I, I don't really care for it as a main color for things, um, but I actually think it might be my favorite of these, um, especially this middle one that had some medium added. Um, I think that is a, if you look at this bit of green right here, 
that's a nice darker shade of that green. I think that's a more interesting shadow effect than the green on its own. Red over green over red is about what you would expect. You get kind of a murky brown color. I think that this looks kind of interesting over the diluted red. This is a little too diluted. You don't see much going on there, but it's a little darker. There's maybe some play there, especially if you've got the red and the cracks and crevices. But it doesn't really look like shadow. I think it's interesting, and I could see using something in between this and a future project. But eh, I think I have to miss. The, the Flesh Terror's red is also a very strong contrast paint. The orange is the other standout for me. That full straight out of the bottle Griffhound orange is a little overpowering for the green, but I think this is cool. I think the, like the diluted orange under the Militarum green, everything kind of overpowers the Plague Bearer flesh. The Plague Bearer flesh is just too light. But look at the contrast between these two. You know, and this is a messy test, so it's not as what you'd see on a model. But I, th I think that's a pretty interesting combat, too. I think that would look really good on scenery, mossy scenery, something that you were really going for, kind of natural, foresty sort of thing. And then here, this is a miss. The Talisar Blue is a terrific, vibrant color. It's just too bright. It overpowers the green. Seeing how much I liked the Ultramarine's Blue here and seeing how dark it was, though, it, it actually gave me the thought that I wanted to pull out a bottle of this... Uh, this pro acro color that's the their faded ultramarine and i almost wonder how this something like this would look so what we got here is just doing a quick blend of the pro acro faded ultramarine on one side into white on the other side just did a quick messy blend here i get these colors mixed together and we'll let that dry a moment and then i'm curious to try the militarium green on top of this gradient I think this might be the winner. Seeing, seeing this, this diluted ultramarines blue, makes me think that a base coat of this kind of uh, periwinkle faded blue on a miniature would make a really nice undercoat for a green. We have let our gradients and our shield here dry, and we're gonna give these a whirl with the Militarum gray, green. So that's what we've got straight out of the bottle. Using this on a flat surface is not exactly the same as painting a miniature, but you, know, you can kind of at least give you a good idea before you start putting paint on the model. So I'm going to do straight out of the bottle on top here. Oh, that's a little bit wet there, but still get the idea. And then I'm going to kind of feather that out straight across, and then we'll get a little bit of water start to feather that. Yeah, that's interesting. Kind of like that. Let's try it on the shield here. We've got our shield. Get a little bit of Militarum green on our brush. And just put kind of a regular even coat of the Militarum green on the sh little test shield here. Do little, little, little test pieces like this. You don't have to do a whole test model. I felt a lot more confident going in to paint the dragon, even just seeing how this one little wooden shield turned out. Wooden shields are great because they've got a lot of texture. They really show kind of the interactions of the paint well. Let me know down in the comments if you thought these two little bonus clips were interesting. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you next time for another Jolly Lark.